girl, what a world, what a light. Oh, I married Joe. What a mind, love is blind, what a white. Joan Davis. With Jim Backus in Why Mary Jo. Delicious hotcakes, Mabel. Thank you, dear. I'm sorry you had to have your coffee without cream. Why does breakfast have to be spoiled? Because we've got a lazy, inefficient milkman. That's the third time this week he's been late. I know it, Charlie, but what can I do? Get rid of him. We'll take him another company. I suppose I'll have to. You're a doll. I can remember the time when you would have been cross as a bear if you didn't have cream in your coffee. Well, I'll tell you, honey. You're the cream in my coffee. <laughs> of course, I like the other kind, too. So if that guy ever does show up again, get rid of him. And don't get soft-hearted about it. I've had just about all I can take from him, believe me. Don't worry, he's through. Bye, dear. Bye, honey. Come in. Morning, Mrs. Harrison. <laughs> Oh, so it's you. Yeah, I'm a little late, but it won't happen again. You bet it won't happen again, because I won't give you a chance to let it happen again. I'm through with you. Finished. I never want to see you around here again. The things I've stood from you. You've been getting away with murder. I should have done this years ago, but I guess I was too soft-hearted. I listened to your phony excuses. I felt sorry for you, but that's all over now. Take your stuff and get out, and don't ever come back here again. No, 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 don't apologize. Nothing you can say or do will make me change my mind. Joan, I still say it's none of your business if Mabel and Charlie had a fight. Just stay out of it, leave them alone, they'll work it out together. Well, that's just the trouble. They're not together. I told you that Mabel kicked Charlie out yesterday morning. Well, I don't understand it. They were always so happy. Such an ideal couple. Joni, are, are you sure that, that you're right? Well, of course I'm sure. I heard her with my own two ears. I'm through with you, she said. Finished. I should have done this a long time ago, but I guess I've been just too soft-hearted. But that's all over with now, so you can get your stuff and get right out of here and never come back again. Joan. Okay, Brad, I'll forgive you one time. You can stay. But please don't let this happen because I'm getting very annoyed. Joan! Well, that's what she said, Brad. Well, yes, dear, I, I know, but when Mabel said all that to Charlie, what did Charlie say? Uh, he said, uh, nothing. He didn't say anything. Well, that's strange. I didn't say anything? Well, no, it isn't. Did you get a chance to say a word when I was just yelling at you, dear? Uh, yes, I, I see what you mean. Okay, dear, they've had a fight. They've split up, but we are not getting involved. Well, they're our dearest friends. I don't know about you, but I can't be that callous. I like to help people in trouble. That's right. A little help from you, and that's what they're in, trouble. Well, this is no time to be funny. Huh? <laughs> well, all right, dear. I, I got to go. It's a little late. Oh, can't you at least have a cup of coffee? I already poured it, dear. Well, all right, Joan. But I'll, I'll be late for court, you know. That, honey, you get me mixed up in these things. I, I tell you, I just don't know. And, uh... Well, Brad, now, about Mabel and Charlie... Look, honey, I'm just as concerned about Mabel and Charlie as you are, but I think it's best they work things out for themselves. Well, the least we can do... Is mind our own business. Now, remember, dear, you promised me, hmm? <laughs> Look, if you want to be a little helpful, will you please have a talk with the milkman? I'm getting sick and tired of having coffee without cream every other day. Brad, how can I think about a milkman at a time like this when Charlie and Mabel's problem is much more important? And so is your promise not to butt in. Goodbye, dear. <laughs> Poor Mabel and Charlie. I'm going to call Mabel. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Not good to a friend, though, if you can't call her and help her out in trouble. What kind of friend would I be if I didn't give her one little... <laughs> Were you, uh, looking for something, dear? Thanks. 
What's the matter, Brad? Don't you trust me? Well, of course I do. What do you want the telephone for? Uh, I was just going to call the grocers and order a couple of pounds of Mabel. Uh, uh, Mabel, <laughs> sir. I love it on pancakes. Hey, yes, I know you, dear. Now, for the last time, remember your promise not to butt in. Hmm? Goodbye. Goodbye. You're not trusting me. I ought to go over and see Mabel in person. No, that'll be right, I guess. I'll be a sport. I'll toss a coin. Heads, I go over to see Mabel. Tails, I don't. <laughs> Heads, I'll go. Believe me, Mrs. Harrison, you don't know how much I appreciate your taking me back. Frankly, I feel sorry for your wife and children, not you. Oh, you'll see. I'll give you perfect service from now on. I'll never be late with a delivery again. All right, let's not discuss it any further. I'm giving you another chance. <laughs> like I said before, I'm willing to let bygones be bygones. Forgive and forget. But believe me, this is the last time. I won't make the same mistake again. I don't mind telling you frankly that I was on the verge of getting somebody else. But I guess I've sort of gotten used to you. So I'm giving you this one last chance. And she's going to give him another chance. But the main thing is, Charlie and Mabel are back together again. Isn't that wonderful? Oh, it certainly is, Joni. I'm so glad that I took your advice, dear, and didn't interfere. That's about time. I, I told you they'd work their problems off by themselves. Oh. <laughs> Got to believe it, Joni. how right you were. Bradley J. Stevens, for being the smartest, cleverest, most intelligent man in the whole world. <laughs> and... <laughs> well, what's uh, that for? Well, I'm not so dumb myself. <laughs> <laughs> and as a special extra reward, pot roast for dinner tonight. Mmm. <laughs> You know, you didn't do that for any of those kisses. <laughs> you know, I invited Mabel and Charlie over for dinner tonight just to celebrate their getting back together again. Oh, that's great, Joni. <laughs> they don't know that we know. And I haven't even told them what the occasion is. <laughs> Won't they be surprised when they find out that we knew all along? <laughs> Doesn't the table look nice, Brad? Oh, wonderful. There they are. Hi, Paul. Oh, hi, Brad. Oh, oh, nice to see you. Hello, Charlie, dear. Oh, it's so nice to have you here. It's nice to be here. What's the occasion? Now, what's special about tonight? The occasion? Well, nothing in particular. It's just that we enjoy being together. <laughs> Don't you two enjoy being together again? Sure we do. Of course, it's always my policy never to look a gift roast in the pot. <laughs> <laughs> right, come on, Mabel, I'll put your coat away. Thank you, dear. Can I help you with anything, Joan? No, I just have to toss the salad. Uh, come on along, we'll toss it back and forth between us. <laughs> Sit down, Charlie. Dinner will be ready in a minute. Okay, Charlie. <laughs> Oh, Mabel, you did a smart thing. I did? Oh, sure. Lots of wives would have been stubborn about it. But you were sensible. I was? Oh, sure. <laughs> Forgive and forget, after all. You and Charlie have been married a long time. Joni, what's this about Charlie? <laughs> what am I supposed to forgive and forget? <laughs> oh, come on, Mabel. Let's not be naive, dear. Joni, what did Charlie do? <laughs> what's the difference? It's over and done with. <laughs> Here's an ashtray, Charlie. Oh, thank you, Mark. Uh, by the way, uh, what did Mabel have to forgive you for? <laughs> well, I, uh, what do you mean? What did Mabel forgive me for? Oh, come on. You can tell me. I'm your old pal, Brad Stevens. You remember? Bert, Brad, I don't know what you're talking about. We're big boys now. Come on, tell me. What did Mabel have to forgive you for? Brad, are you out of your... Wait a minute. I know the technique. If Mabel says she has to forgive me for something, you can bet your last nickel that she wants me to forgive her for something. Joni, you have no right to torture me like this. What did Charlie do? I insist that you tell me. Well, I... What's the difference? It's over and done with. I get it. It's so awful, you don't even want to repeat it. All right, I'll find out for myself. 
She's not putting anything over on me. I'll get to the bottom of this. Charlie! Hey, Charlie Harrison, what did you do? Never mind what I did. What did you do? Look, kid. You'll get no place accusing me. And whatever it is you expect to be forgiven for, you can save your breath. Is that so? Well, let me remind you of something, Mabel. Whenever there's forgiving to be done, I'm always the one who has to do it. Oh, really? <laughs> well, at least I've never done anything that was so horrible it couldn't be repeated. <laughs> Look, I think we ought to... Is that so, little Miss Emerson? Uh, sit down. Don't give me any of your sarcasm. Captain. Look who's talking about sarcasm. <laughs> because I made a delicious... I've heard enough of it from you. <laughs> you don't have to hear any more of it, as far as I'm concerned, ever. And if we don't start now... That's okay with me. It's liable to get cold. On the breath. <laughs> If I've told you once, Joan, I have told you a thousand times. Oh, easy. Easy. <laughs> Comic section. Joan. <sighs> Picture a little off the nanny. Uh, look, honey, you've got to take this more seriously. You've got to learn to mind your own business. You've got to stay on your side of the fence. You've got to stop being a little Mary Dixit. You've got to... <laughs> Joanie, you can't do that absolutely because I tell you, dear, you've got to learn this. You've got to be more serious about these things. Well, I am serious, Brad, but what am I going to do? I know, I'll go over and have a talk with Mabel and explain. No, 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 dear, you've done enough mischief as it is. No. Oh, well, I am sorry. I know, honey, I hate to be this way impatient, but... Uh... Hi, Judge Stevens, here's your bill. Oh, yes, I'll... Uh... Get you a check. Yeah, morning, Mrs. Stevens. Hello. I'll tell you one thing, Brad. Dear, no, uh, Charlie and Mabel Harrison may be our dearest friends, but I must say they're acting very childish. Oh, you're so right. <laughs> yeah, about Mrs. Harrison, I mean. You sure hit the nail on the head about her. She's a very unreasonable woman. Now, wait a minute. Oh, like the day before yesterday. She fires me. Then yesterday, she hires me back. Uh, here you are. There you are. Oh, and the yeah. bowling out I had to take. She said, I was on the verge of getting someone else. But I guess I'm getting kind of used to you, so I'll give you one more chance. Now, look, Mrs. Harrison happens to be a very close... What did she say? Hmm? Oh, and you should have heard her when she was firing me. She said... I'm through with you. Finished. Should have done this a long time ago, but I've been too soft-hearted. Yeah. Her very words. How did you know? Well, I... I just... <laughs> yes, well, uh, thank you. Thank you very much. I'm glad you stopped by. Let's uh, enjoy the service. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Joe. I feel a headache coming on, Brad. I think I'll lie down. Joni, Joni, you come back here, you... Now, look, Joan. Now, Joan. 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 Uh, look at me. Tell me it's not true. It isn't true. It's not what I think. It's not what you think. I'm wrong. You're wrong. It was the milkman. Can we start over again? Oh, Joan. Joan. Don't you realize what you've done? You, you butted into people's lives that had no problem before, and now they have a problem. Thanks to you. You're right. Well, Brad, what I mean is, how was I to know that she was talking to the milkman? The way she was yelling at him and the things she said to him, anybody would have thought she was talking to her husband. Uh, it was a perfectly natural mistake. But not really. Oh, yes, you're right, it is. But it never does. It always happens to you. Yeah, how about that? Oh. Look, Jim, yes. You're going right over to Mabel and Charlie's, and you're going to tell them, come here, you're going to tell them exactly what happened. I got a better idea, Brad. I'm going to take your original advice. Let them work it out themselves. Joan. <laughs> no, really, I, I don't... Uh, Brad, please, I, I don't want to go over are. there because nope. you All just right, have to. All right, come on, honey, don't you have to. Yeah, no, no, dear, you look just fine. Well, now, uh, now uh, go there. <laughs> Kiss me goodbye, Brad. <laughs> no, uh, Joan, no, that's... No, you go over there. Don't you come back until you tell them. Hmm. I beg your pardon. I said, hmm. That's a very intelligent remark. It wasn't addressed to you. I was humping to myself. Please continue to do so. I'm not on humping terms with you. <laughs> ah, that's a hot one. You're in the wrong completely, and you know it. In self-defense, you'll get angry with me. It's nothing of the kind. And tell me, pray, why are you angry with me? As if you didn't know. I don't. Tell me. Well, it's because you... you... Well, didn't you? Didn't I what? I don't know. I thought so. Well, what are you mad with me for? Well, because you, you... See, you don't know either. <laughs> well, then, why didn't... I thought that... 
Charlie! Mabel, we've been mad at each other all along and for no reason at all. Oh, what fools we've been. Darling. Oh. I'll heat up the coffee for you. Make yourself comfortable. Here, here's a cigar. Oh, my little doll. Thank you, dear. <laughs> Oh, hi, Joan. Hello, Charlie. I is Mabel here? Yes, yeah, she's out in the kitchen. Oh, well, then I'd better talk fast. I'd rather Mabel didn't know that I told you. Told me what? Uh, what I'm going to tell you. I didn't know myself until just a little while ago, but Brad insisted that I tell you. Tell me what? About the milkman. <laughs> the milkman? Uh, yes, it was a perfectly natural mistake. Uh, you see, when I heard him and Mabel, well, naturally, I thought it was you, see? <laughs> would have been here so early in the morning. And the thing she said to him, well, of course I thought it was you. You thought the milkman was me? Well, it was a perfectly natural mistake. It sounded like someone talking to her husband. <laughs> Charlie, it's, it's very hard for me to tell you this. You don't have to say any more. I understand perfectly. You do? Well, then I'm glad I told you. Uh, Brad felt that you ought to know. He said I had to tell you no matter how painful it was. I'm glad you told me. Yeah. Hi, Joni. Hello. Here's your coffee, dear. I'm sorry, I'm out of cream. I forgot to order some from the milkman. You never got around to talking about that, did you? What? You can keep your coffee. And here's your cigar. <laughs> Charlie! Charlie! It all happened so suddenly. We were all here together last week, watching television. Mabel and Charlie so happy. Holding hands. Now. Yeah, I remember they came over to see their favorite program. This is your life. They were sitting there, both so happy, crying over the program. <laughs> Very sentimental program, yeah. Get you right here, son. Oh boy. Brad, I just got an idea. What? Do you think that you could get Mabel and Charlie back over here again if you didn't let one know that the other one was coming? Well, I don't know, Joni. It might be tough. Well, try, Brad, because I know I've got an idea to bring them back together again. Joni, what are you going to do? You'll see, Brad. It's going to get you right here, Brad. This is going to be sentimental. This may even be real sad. I don't know what this is all about. Brad insisted that I come. Said you had a surprise for me. Well, what is it? Well, just be patient, Mabel. You'll find out soon. Well, well, I can't wait, Joan. Oh, no, Mabel, please don't go now, dear. Charlie! Oh, Look, I don't know what else you've got up your sleeve, Brad, but it's not gonna work. You can lead a horse to water. Don't you dare call me a horse. I didn't mean it that way, but if the horse you fit... Now, quiet, everybody. Mabel and Charlie Harrison, this is your life. What? <laughs> Say, that's our photo album. Yeah. Yes, well, now, if you'll just take your place in the seat of honor while we flip through the pages of your life. <laughs> Mabel Harrison, do you remember Marshall High School in Chicago, those happy, carefree years in school? I hated it. I never could understand geometry. Yes, those tender moments. And do you remember when you first went to Marshall as a freshman? <laughs> Give me that. <laughs> oh, those happy, happy years. And Charlie, uh, do you remember your boyhood? Those summers in Coney Island? <laughs> well, I've filled out a lot since then. Well, there are a few places where you popped out. Now, look. Yes. Now, you two didn't know each other then. And little did you know that your families would move to California and you would meet. Do you remember your first date? He ordered a chocolate soda and she ordered a banana split. And they just sat there for hours. Now, whose voice can that be? That voice. It isn't. Yes, it is. Pop Martin, the man who owned the ice cream parlor where you two went for your first date. He's come all the way from Glendale, brought in by interurban transit lines, all electric trolleys at 19 miles an hour, all the way. When you think of transportation, think of interurban transit lines. And here he is, Pop Martin. <laughs> Seems 
to me that you owe me for those sodas yet. <laughs> then we would forget the time that Charlie got so nervous he ate a banana split and forgot to peel the banana. <laughs> ah, sure was a love, all right. Oh, that's fine. Now, if you two yeah. will just sit down, there'll be plenty of time for more reminiscing. And if you'll just take a seat in Charlie and Mabel's past. You know that the handholders kids ever did see? Yes. They held hands all the Now, Mabel drew up to Julie and two chocolate sodas. I used to say to myself, where did they been? There was an old Later, we're a little late. But I later in the past, in the past. And I, and I, thank you. And now this is one of the most tender moments. Charlie and Mabel, you two will just sit back and relax and try to catch your breath from all these wonderful, wonderful surprises. We will hear a word from Judge Stevens, which I am sure will be of great interest to all of us. Judge Stevens. Uh, folks, as judge in this fair community, I would like to tell you about a very important product, marriage. Marriage is endorsed by our finest citizens, and if used properly, can be very enduring and long-lasting. Now, here's another special offer. If you use understanding, love, and faith with your marriage, we will give you free of charge another wonderful product, <laughs> happiness in the giant economy size. This offer never expires. So if you're all at sea, count on the ship of matrimony. It won't let you drown. <laughs> now back to our genial host. <laughs> Thank you, Judge Stevens. That's mighty, mighty good advice. And now back to This Is Your Life, Charlie and Mabel Harrison. <laughs> Charlie and Mabel, December 14th was an important date in your lives. We got married. I'll never forget that day. Yes, you were married. And it was a large wedding. There were hundreds of guests. Nobody had a better time at the wedding than I did, but I had to go home early. I remember I cried all night because I had to leave. That's the voice of someone who played a very important part at your wedding. Somebody whom you, Mabel, gave the first slice of your wedding cake. A flower girl, Charlie, the flower girl at our wedding. Little Susie Barker? That's right. It's little Susie Barker, your flower girl. <laughs> have recognized you, you, you've uh, grown up. <laughs> well, you must remember, Mabel, uh, you were married 14 years ago, and Susie's been to a lot of weddings since then. A lot of wedding cake has floated under the bridge. I'll never forget that wedding. It was the most wonderful, tender thing I've ever experienced. The ceremony. No, the roast duck. <laughs> oh, it was delicious. Yes, Mabel, and speaking of weddings, we have a wonderful surprise for you. We have an exact replica of your wedding cake. Oh. I'll get it for you, dear. Mrs. Stevens. Yes? I'm sorry, but I got hungry standing in the kitchen so long. <laughs> you mean you ate the whole... Will the bride and group... No, no. <laughs> Well, we had an exact replica of your wedding cake. <laughs> well, thank you, Susie. Uh, just take a few seats in Mabel and Charlie's cast. <laughs> Sweet. Mm. Well, Mabel, you were married and very happily. But Charlie was working at the office all day, and Mabel, you became bored. Uh, you needed other interests, something to entertain you. You found someone that you became very attached to, someone you spent many, many happy hours with, and you were no longer bored because at last you had found someone that you could turn to, someone who is always there. You who I'm here. Do you recognize this boy? The back door was open, so I came right in. The milkman, that doesn't. What are you doing here? I was just going to introduce myself. The judge to forgot to sign the I check. I know, but I just was giving a little, but I, I had them all together. Now, why did you have to come in? And here they are, Mabel and Charlie Harrison, surrounded by their loved ones. Is this a touching scene, ladies and gentlemen? We're going to give them a 16-millimeter film of this happy event that they can run in the privacy of their own home. And there will be a big party at the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel later, where they call
Seen in tonight's cast were Geraldine Carr, Hal Smith, Jerry Hauser, and Charles Marshall. Rain and fall. Mm-hmm.